Big Tech Applied Science Unit 1 Biology. I'm doing a whole video about white blood cells. Now, why? Well, if you look in the specification, it doesn't say very much at all. It says understand cell specialization, talk about structure and function of these particular cells. OK, uh, and it just says bullet point white blood cells. Uh, however, the specification suggests that you don't need to know very much. If you look at some past paper questions, however, clearly you do need to know quite a bit about white blood cells and the other types of cell as well. As a minimum, I would say make sure you know what's in the revision guide. Make sure you've learned that, you've taken notes on that and you know that really well. There's a big fat textbook as well minimum what's in the revision guide and I'm going to try and cover in this video what I reckon you need to know. So here's some basic stuff. White blood cells or leukocytes are part of the body's immune system. So if stuff gets inside the body that shouldn't be there, for instance uh, bacteria and viruses and fungi and just rubbish, then it will be attacked by your white blood cells. Your white blood cells travel in the bloodstream uh, and then they will go to the tissue where they are needed and they will leave the bloodstream through the walls of the capillaries and they will do their business. They are very small. You can only see them with a microscope. Uh, they have all of the organelles that you would find in any other body cell. OK, so there's mitochondria and vesicles and lysosomes and Golgi apparatus and all that stuff. OK, uh, all the organelles that you would see in an, a normal body cell, animal cell. Uh, they are produced in the bone marrow uh, as something called stem cells. Stem cells don't have a particular job. Uh, the stem cells will then become specialised to do a particular job. So they will develop into different types of cell. They become specialized, specialization. Uh, the process is called differentiation. Yeah, when they become specialized to do different jobs, that's called differentiation. Uh, the nucleus, now looking at the structure of this cell, the nucleus has a lobed structure, so it's not a single blob in the middle. It's all these blobby bits joined together. We say it has a lobed structure. Uh, that helps to make the cell very, very flexible because it needs to, to kind of enter and leave uh, the blood vessels. To get to the tissue, it has to get through the capillary wall. So there are pores. P-O-R-E-S, pores in the capillary wall, which is a squamous endothelial tissue, isn't it? Uh, so they need to be very, very flexible so that they can squeeze through to change shape to get to the tissue where it's needed. Looking at the picture as well, you can also see these, these white, this, these grains, and they are lysosomes which contain uh, digestive enzymes. Now, there are lots of different types of white blood cell. We're just going to talk in this video, and I reckon you'll get away with just need. You need to know a bit about neutrophils and lymphocytes, OK? Uh, and we'll talk about neutrophils and lymphocytes in a bit of detail, and I'm not going to bother with the other ones. If you do A-level biology, absolutely go for it. But, you know, we can't, we can't be writing a book on this. Here we go. Neutrophils. Now, they are the most common. Uh, they uh, attack bacteria and fungi and other foreign debris that gets inside your body through the skin. OK, uh, these bacteria, etc., will release chemicals uh, that will attract the neutrophils. So the neutrophils will go to uh, where the bacteria are and they will engulf them. Look at look at this video here. It's 
and it takes it inside so that the bacteria ends up inside the neutrophil and they ingest it. So they engulf it and then digest it with enzymes. Uh, so in your lysosomes, you've got lots of digestive enzymes, which will basically break down the bacteria. Okay. Looking at the picture there, you see the lysosomes, you see the lobed nucleus, and that's neutrophils, the most common type of white blood cell. Now, lymphocytes. Lymphocytes, uh, there are different types of lymphocytes. You've got your, your B cells and your T cells, uh, and you've got things called natural killer cells. Now, the natural killer cells, like the neutrophils, they are non-specific. They don't just attack one particular type of virus. Basically, they will attack, well, what happens if a cell becomes infected with a virus, then on the surface of the cell, there are abnormal structures, stuff that shouldn't be there. And the natural killer cells will detect that and it will attack the cell, okay? The cell which is infected with a virus. Important, they are non-specific. I should have said about neutrophils as well, that they are non-specific. They don't just attack one type of bacteria. Uh, B and T cells are specific. They attack only one type of virus. They have receptors on their surface. Okay, look at the diagram. Receptors on the surface which detect that particular virus. Okay, uh, and so they are specific. Let's have a look at a few questions then. Um, do you want to pause the video have a go yourself and the answers are white blood cell is a specialized cell complete the meaning of the term specialized cell a cell becomes specialized when its structure is altered this enables a cell to have a certain function a specific function i would say is probably the best word there this process is called cellular differentiation uh, a neutrophil is a type of white blood cell, shows neutrophils in a capillary. Identify the type of cell labeled W. Well, that's the wall of the capillary, so that is endothelial. Yeah, it's a, a squamous endothelial cell, that one. Uh, neutrophils travel in the blood. They move through pores and capillaries. Explain how the structure of a neutrophil uh, enables it to do that to get through the pores. Well, they are very, very flexible, uh, so they can change shape easily. Uh, and the nucleus is lobed. Remember that this nucleus isn't one single blob. It's made up of these lobes joined together, and that helps it to squeeze through the pores of the capillary. Neutrophils contain many lysosomes. Explain the function of lysosomes. Well, when the neutrophil has engulfed a bacterium, then the lysosomes contain digestive enzymes and they will attach themselves to the bacterium and form a pocket of digestive enzymes and break down the bacterium uh, into substances which are then absorbed. OK, so lysosomes contain digestive enzymes. Three marks there say a little bit more. And so we get to this monster here, which is from a few years ago, uh, shows the ultrastructure of a neutrophil and a lymphocyte. OK, compare the structures and functions of neutrophils and lymphocytes. Your answer should refer to similarities and differences. Now, one point here is that it's not saying use information from the photographs. It's saying compare the structures and functions of neutrophils and lymphocytes. So what do you know about neutrophils and lymphocytes in terms of their structure, in terms of their function? Uh, talk about similarities and differences. Now, there's an awful lot. We could write a book on this. I mean, if you, if you knew enough to write a book, you could write a book on this. This is the mark scheme. Now, 
are we expected to write all of that down? And the answer is absolutely no. But this is information that you could include in your answer. I don't know most of this. The way that T cells and B cells work together is quite complicated. They do it in A-level biology, okay? Uh, but the stuff in there that we do know that I've covered in this video, certainly enough to get six marks. So this is my answer. This is my answer, okay? Uh, white blood cells or leukocytes are an important part of the body's immune system. They protect us from pathogens that may get inside our bodies. A pathogen is an organism that can cause disease like a, a virus or a bacterium or a fungi. OK, that's worth a couple of marks. They travel through blood vessels. They then squeeze through the pores in the capillaries to enter the, tish, enter the tissue where they are needed. To enable them to do this, they are very flexible, which enables them to do this. And the lobed structure of the nucleus also makes them more flexible. I mean, that's a marker too. Good stuff there. Now, some differences between them. Uh, oh, by the way, I could have mentioned a few other things. I could have mentioned the, the fact that they were made in bone marrow as stem cells, and then they become specialized. I could have mentioned the fact that they contain all of the organelles that you would find in a body cell. Anyway, neutrophil cells are more common than T cells. These are some differences now. Uh, 50 to 70 percent yeah, of white blood cells. They are also larger. Uh, they are non-specific, so they will not just attack one type of pathogen. I think that's very important. That, I think that definitely should be there. They are non-specific. They engulf bacteria and then digest them with enzymes carried in lysosomes. T cells are specific. Uh, they will recognize certain pathogens and only attack them. And how do they know who to attack? Well, they've got receptors on their surface, which help them to recognize the pathogens. OK, I could write loads more. It's only six marks. I reckon that's six marks worth. If you disagree, especially if you're a, a, a teacher, yeah, let me know if you reckon that's six marks worth.